G'day. Dutch driver Nick De Vries drove for two different teams at the recent Italian Grand Prix. Aston Martin in FP1 and then in a race with Williams and he scored points on his very first outing. I'll tell you more about it in just a moment. This is Nick De Vries, Nick with a Y. The Dutch driver scored points in his very first race with Williams. Of course, he didn't know he was going to be racing for Williams until the Saturday prior to the Sunday race. Stepping back to Thursday, he arrived at the track for his duties as Mercedes reserve driver, wearing an IWC watch. This, of course, is the sponsor of Mercedes. On Friday, he arrived at the track as an Aston Martin FP1 driver. And on the Saturday, a couple of hours prior to FP3, he gets word that Mercedes have loaned him to Williams to race for the weekend because Alex Albon had come down with appendicitis. That meant he had to change watches again to a Bremont, the sponsor of Williams. Now, Nick is a watch man. He and I have spoken a few times about his love of watches, and he has a couple of nice timepieces, but he can't wear them to the track if he's representing a team that has a watch sponsor, as all of these three teams I've mentioned have. Oh, and before I forget, if you are looking for a VPN, have a look at Surfshark. Surfshark is an app and a browser extension that allows you to place your device anywhere in the world. Sometimes I'll get to countries that won't allow me access to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. So in those cases, I simply log on through Surfshark to a country that allows me to use those sites. Plus, if you're a Netflix user, you can log on to different regions and access different content. Oh, and recently my brother-in-law wanted some Ralph Lauren gear out of the US, but he couldn't log on to the US site because it was automatically taken back to the Australian site. Surfshark came to his rescue, allowing him to log on to the US site and buy. And right now, if you click on the link in the description below, you'll save 83%, you'll get three months free and a money back guarantee. Now, it's a pretty hectic thing when you get thrust into an F1 car with just a couple of hours notice. Obviously, they have to get his seat right. They have to change the number on the car. And obviously, Alex's car had 23 on it. Nick steps in. He raced under number 45. Now, is that Nick's number? No, it's not. Nick races under number 17 in Formula E. But Williams reserves the number 45 for any of its test drivers. Here's Roy Nissany driving under number 45 in two instances at Bahrain pre-season testing in 2021 and later in the year at the French GP. And what did his manager have to say about this? Well, Nick manages himself. So uh, he gets the final call on it. And does he have a trainer? Well, not a full-time one and certainly not at the track. So some of the team members had to step in and provide various roles that a trainer would typically provide. He also had to learn the car and that's no mean feat, even though he had driven it earlier in the year. When was it? At the Spanish Grand Prix, he drove FP1. But still, he's got to get all that through his head. And that steering wheel, as you probably know, is very complicated. So how did he go in FP3? Well, if you followed it, you'd know he came 14th. That's a fair effort for someone who's just stepped into the car. But three hours later, he went one better and qualified 13th. But of course, because of penalties, that meant that he actually started eighth alongside Max Verstappen. And in answer to some of your questions about why rookie drivers get to drive an FP1 sometimes during the year, well, that's a, an FIA initiative that each team has to give up two FP1 slots throughout the year for rookie drivers. I can't imagine what it was like for Nick to head back to his hotel on Saturday night knowing he'd be starting next to Max Verstappen in his very first F1 Grand Prix. He did admit he had no sleep and that must be tough. Prior to the race start, I saw him a couple of times. Obviously, when he came in, he was in bright and early. And then for the driver's parade, his first F1 driver's parade, where he walked out on track with George Russell, his Mercedes teammate, because uh, of course, Nick is the test driver for Mercedes. An hour or so later, he returned to the grid and uh, on his, or as you see at the right, is Lars from Williams. Now, this is an interesting story because Lars is not his trainer. Lars works alongside Jost Capito normally. He also hosts various guests in the Williams hospitality suite. But on the Saturday, he mentioned that if Nick needed a helper, he could do it because he's done it before. Yes, Lars stepped in when Aleish Casanovas, George Russell's trainer, wasn't available for a race last year. He knew the deal with the grid. He'd done it before. And on Sunday morning, he was told, yes, You've got the gig looking after Nick on race day. And he would make sure his helmet, balaclava, hands, device, spare gloves, etc., were all packed in the bag. He walked him out underneath this umbrella, got him into the car and sent him off on his very first F1 race. So what do we know about Nick? Well, he's got half a million Instagram followers. 
He's 27 years of age, born on the 6th of February 1995 in the Netherlands. He stands 5 foot 6 or 168 centimetres, weighs 67 kilos. He's dating a young woman in her early 20s. This is Eva Bruggenworth. He's adept with the media and he's doing his very first signed print collaboration with me. He will be signing 50 of these and numbering them at the Singapore Grand Prix. You can get online and see which numbers are still left at kimilman.com and you could be having this framed in a couple of weeks or so and hanging it in your home or office. After the grid, I then headed up to the first turn to shoot the start. And as you can see, Nick got around it in fine form. Some, what was it, 50 laps later, ended up ninth, scored two points for the team, and was a mere seven seconds behind the leader, Max Verstappen, and did a lot better than his teammate, Nicholas Latifi, which would have been tough for Nicholas, because Nicholas finished a lap down, and he's had a lot more experience in that car. After the race, he went back to Park Ferme, and could not get out of the car. Yeah, you heard right. His arms and shoulders were so sore that he could not pull himself out of the car. He had to get on the radio to the team and say, I need help. A couple of other drivers came over to him and congratulated him while he was stuck in the car. I'm not even sure they knew he couldn't get out. But eventually, the FIA had to give permission for someone from the team to go into Park Fermo because it's a clean area. Only drivers are allowed to leave the area. No one's allowed to go in. But anyway, one of the team members did go in. They extracted him and brought him back out to the TV media pen where he willingly talked to anybody and everybody. And then somebody realized that his helmet was still sitting inside the car. So somebody had to get permission to go back out and grab his helmet out of the car in Park Ferme and bring it back. In fact, I did say to him um, as he was leaving the media pen, I said, what surprised you most about the day? And he just sort of thought and said, how sore my arms are. But he spent a long time talking to the media. In fact, Lars came down to check on how long he was going to be because Jost wanted to greet him and they wanted to do a little celebration. But there was some concern that Jost wasn't going to be able to hang around long enough to congratulate his rookie driver. Thankfully, he got that opportunity and the team did a group shot out in pit lane to congratulate him. It was a remarkable effort. Good enough to earn him driver of the day. Do you know how many rookie drivers have scored points in their very first F1 race? I counted 67 in the 72 years the sport's been going. And who are the current drivers to have done so? Zhou Guan Yu, Yuki Tsunoda, Carlos Sainz, Sebastian Vettel, Lewis Hamilton, and Kevin Magnussen. Kevin actually scored the highest second in 2014. So where is Nick going to be in 2023? He'll be driving in Formula One. I think he'll be at AlphaTauri. I think Pierre Gasly will go to Alpine. And I think Logan Sargent will probably end up at Williams. There are a couple of hurdles to jump there for Logan, but I think that is a strong possibility. I also think there's every chance he'll be in the car again in Singapore for the 2022 Singapore GP and possibly in Japan because there's no guarantee that Alex Albon will be 100% by Singapore because it is such a gruelling race. The team will want to make sure that Alex is 100%. I like Nick. He's a personable young man to talk to. Great in the paddock with everybody. I think he'd be a marvellous addition for Formula One and I think we're going to be seeing a whole lot more of him as the years go by. Now, before you rush off and open up your Surfshark account and go and buy one of those Nick DeVries signed F1 prints, please like the video, become a subscriber, and join as a VIP member. Because on the 27th of September, one of my VIP members will be getting this signed Kimi Raikkonen print. You'll find all of my digital images at ProStarPix.com, wall art, merchandise, photo books, and driver prints at KimIllman.com. And for my best images live from the track and all during the week, where do you go? Instagram and search at Kim Illman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. That meant he was wearing an, what is that thing called?